I'm not voting for Joe Biden in 2024. There are many reasons for this. One of them has to do with how he bungled student loan forgiveness. It's clear the man has nothing but contempt for young people. I mean, see for yourself. And so the younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. <laughs> no, no. I have no empathy for it. Give me a break. Because here's the deal, guys. We decided we were going to change the world. And we did. We did. Did you, Sleepy Joe? Did ya? The boomers have always had their own heads up their own asses. These people are 60 years old now. There's no changing them. This is a terminal affliction. Those craniums are gonna remain up in those colons until they drop. The boomers have always been like, the world is ours. And then people ask them, what about the future? And then they say, what the fuck is that about the world being ours? It's really funny because of this little clip, as a young person, whenever I see Joe Biden slip and fall like the old man that he is, I also catch myself saying, I have no empathy for it. Another reason why I'm not gonna vote for Joe Biden in 2024 is he's not gonna debate any of his challengers. He refuses to. What the fuck? If you're a politician and you don't debate your opponents, I don't care if your name is Biden, Trump, you're a pussy. You're a big old pussy McPussington, and you should find another fucking career, you fuck. I know amendments to the Constitution are supposed to be rare, but if I had my way, I'd throw one in there that says candidates seeking office must debate, especially if they're running for president. But we don't live in my perfect little world. Instead, the president of the United States currently has the motor skills, the speech patterns, and frankly, the age of a Galapagos tortoise. The motherfucker can't speak, okay? He can't talk. And cast a ballot is consistently higher than the percentage of the men who do so, end of quote. Repeat the line. Women are not without electoral and or political, or, or maybe precise, not and or, or political power. The first frost, you know what was happening? You had to put on your windshield wipers to get literally the oil slick off the window. That's why I and so damn many other people I grew up have cancer. And I want to thank all of you here for in including bipartisan elected officials like Representative Governor, Senator Braun, Senator Booker, Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here to help make this a reality. Biden's team doesn't want old Sleepy Joe to do his mush mouth impression up on a big stage next to Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. because they know it's going to go bad. And the people who make up the Democratic Party apparatus have decided to be the good little cronies that they are. And they've also said there will be no debate. Here is Democratic stooge Simone Sanders speaking on the matter. Bobby Kennedy Jr. doing well. He's at 19 percent. Hasn't really gotten that that much out there. I mean, it's it, and I'm starting to hear more and more talk about him. Are we going to actually have a challenge here? I'm trying not to laugh, Joe. There's not going to Wait, be. Can I just can I stop you for a second? Yes. Do you know? How many people said the same thing about Donald Trump in 2015 on yes, this show? Yes, except said I will the note, same exact well, thing. Yes, because there was going to be a Republican primary. But I really think that uh, the mealy mouth Democrats, as I like to call them, and some of my progressive friends who would like to live in a fantasy land, they need to come back to reality. And the reality is this. The sitting president of the United States of America is a Democrat, a Democrat that would like to run for re-election so much so that he has declared a re-election campaign. In that case, the Democratic National Committee will not facilitate a primary process. There will be no debate stage for Bobby Kennedy, Marianne Williamson, or anyone else. So we're going to have another Bobby Kennedy in an empty chair in a debate, right? There will be no debating. Yeah, no debate. The Democratic yeah. National Committee administers the debates, and they're not going to set up a primary process for debates to for someone to challenge the head of the Democratic Party. Wait, what was that? There will be no debating. Yeah, no debate. The Democratic yeah. National Committee administers the debates, and they're not going to set up a primary process for debates to for someone to challenge the head of the Democratic Party. One more game. And they're not going to set up a primary process for debates to for someone to challenge the head of the Democratic Party. Thank you, Simone Sanders, for showing yours and your party's whole ass. I hope you know that the Democrats get their name from the word democracy. I hope you know that.
While these two reasons weigh heavily on my decision to not vote for Biden next year, I'd say currently the main reason why I'm not voting for Joe Biden in 2024 has to do with his response to this question this reporter asked him on the beach right after Lahaina in Maui was destroyed by a wildfire. Are you serious? What is your problem? How dare you say that? As president, you don't get to say no comment in this instance. This isn't a question about your corrupt crackhead son. This is an inquiry about a part of America that burned to the fucking ground. People stayed in the water for five hours to avoid the blaze. They were still pulling bodies out of the smoldering rubble, and all you can say about it was... Will you come talk about the Hawaii resort? What's even more pitiful is that the only kind of immediate relief these people received was a mere $700. <laughs> While Ukraine, which I need to remind people, isn't even in fucking America, gets millions and billions every few weeks. Beyond pathetic. Lahaina isn't the only citywide disaster that Biden fumbled under his presidency. This is like what happened in East Palestine, Ohio. You have the railroad company Norfolk Southern that caused this derailment in this Ohio town, which caused vinyl chloride to spill out into the environment which ended up killing a lot of people's pets and now the residents of the town suffer from chronic illnesses this is what the town looked like for days and while this was a corporate cause disaster not a natural one what did joe biden do when east palestine ohio was dirty bombed by norfolk southern jack shit he didn't even visit the town once <laughs> This is like George W. Bush flying over New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina times two. What the fuck? For all of you American cities out there that are going through crises, either caused by industry, nature, or overall government negligence, I have some advice for you. If you want any kind of relief, what you're going to need to do is get Vladimir Putin's number, call him up and see if you can get him to invade your town because that's the only way you're gonna get sleepy Joe Biden to give a fuck about you. Fuck you, Methuselah. As of now, there's nothing you can do to get me to hold my nose and check that box next to your name on it. I don't care how good your NLRB is, which is sad because they're really fucking good. I wish I could just vote for them and forget about you. Nobody wants your old <laughs> decrepit ass. So who am I going to vote for? I just want to state right off the bat, definitely not a Republican. Mm -mm. I'm sorry, but I'd rather be waterboarded. Uh, when it comes to the Democrats, the only Democrat I like is Marianne Williamson. Watch this video of her destroying Bill Maher for being an elitist prick who lives in his own little wealth bubble. Medicare? But it's I'm not Medicare for all. Unemployment? It's Medicare, it's not Medicare for all. Well, That's Obamacare we... is very getting very close to Medicare for all. We still all. have 85 million yeah. Americans who are underinsured or uninsured. And you have yeah. to be really, like, kind of kind of buffered well, are, emotionally if you think 85 million people does not matter. No, I, no I, I hope I'm not the straw man who thinks 85 million No, I'm not saying that you are, okay. but I'm just saying when people say, oh, well, that doesn't matter. No, I, but I'm also saying that when you just ride around, you just see a country that does not look like it's falling apart. Bill. Like my eyes also matter. It matters what I read and what people tell me. It also matters that I just live in this world and I travel a lot and I'm out in the city a lot. And a lot of people are just living their best lives. And they're not, they're not all fucking rich. It's not all the top 20%. Uh, for all its horrible problems, this country still somehow, how we got through the pandemic and didn't go broke, I don't know. I mean, we probably will in the future. Maybe it's the inflation is, is part of that issue. But I just don't see a country where the people are just seething and unhappy when I'm out. And that has to count for something. You know where I was last night? I was speaking to teenagers on Skid Row. Do you know how many people are homeless in Los Angeles County? 
on any given night, 70, <laughs> If you go to Skid Row, you're going to... Okay. That's, that's my point. You say not... you drive around, but where do you drive around? Okay. You don't drive too many miles. I, of course. Why would I go to Skid Row? That's kind of my point. So you don't really... You say, I don't see anybody no, going through that. I, that's well, right. Don't. You're not driving right. there. And most They're people don't. They're more than don't. an underclass. Yes. There's this invisibilized... Yes. Field well, of suffering out there. It's not more than an underclass. It's an underclass. It's a large, a too large underclass that this country, that it's a scandal, that we we certainly can't seem to address it. No, 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 no. It's not that but, we can't address it. It's that in order to address it, you have to challenge the corporate bottom line. Because of this clip, Bill, if, uh, if I were you, I wouldn't show my face in public for a couple weeks. A part of it has to do with the sheer ignorance you displayed in this video, but most of it has to do with this Tony Montana cosplay you got going on here. Where'd you get that shirt, Bill? Buffalo Exchange? <laughs> you say. My eyes also matter. And yes, they do matter, Bill, but based on that fit, they might not work anymore. The world is yours, chico. I like Marianne's stances on healthcare, corporate power, and income inequality. I imagine if she were present, she would be on the scene in Lahaina and East Palestine within the day. I don't like her stance though on Ukraine. As far as I know, Marianne Williamson is in support of Ukraine, and she hasn't said that she would stop sending military aid if she were president. She thinks the conflict should end soon, but she doesn't seem super committed to having that happen. You know which Democrat has a position on Ukraine that I support though? RFK Jr. And this, honestly, is the only thing I like about RFK Jr. When you ask him about healthcare, he's got nothing. As you know, every other developed nation in the world has universal healthcare. Do you support universal healthcare through a Medicare for All program or something similar? I mean, my, my, you know, my, um, my, I, I would say my, my highest ambition would be to have a single payer program, which, you know, with, that people who want to have private programs can go ahead and do that, but to have a single pair program that is available to, to everybody. I don't know how politically realistic that is, but you know, if you ask me if I were designing the, the system from the beginning, that's what I would do. You want to know what the key words in that statement were? Politically, politically realistic. realistic. In politician speak, what Bobby just said was, I'm going to say rhetorically, I'm for single payer, not even Medicare for all, just single payer. And since I don't really find it politically realistic, if I become president, what am I going to do about it? Jack shit. Weak. And he calls himself a capitalist. Gross. Bobby, I feel for you, man. I know the CIA, MK Ultra, Sirhan, Sirhan, and he killed your dad. But honestly, man, you, uh, you just kind of suck. I've seen several videos of people interviewing RFK Jr. and honestly, he reminds me of all the other mealy mouth Democrats. Wait, he's not running as a Democrat anymore? Trump just shit his pants. But you know what? I think the person I'm gonna vote for is Dr. Cornell West. And if you don't like that, here, you can hold this. And if all of you blue-haired liberals with your blue-haired politics extra don't like that, then here, you can have another. And it doesn't really matter if I don't vote for Joe Biden, because I'm from California, and come November 2024, California's gonna go bluer than your balls, alright? Cornell West is the only guy who's saying the things that I want to hear. Straight up. And if this must be another election where I have to pick between the lesser of 15 evils, this guy seems to be the least evil out of all of them. And you know what? I am feeling so disaffected right now. I, I may not vote at all, to tell you the truth. Um, I've done it before, and I could see myself doing it again. So in summation, um, I'm not telling you to vote for Cornell West. I'm just telling you I'm voting for Cornell West. And I'm not telling you to not vote for Joe Biden. I'm just telling you why I'm not voting for Joe Biden. And I'm not going to tell you not to vote for Trump because that's only going to make you vote for Trump even harder. So what am I trying to tell you? I guess I'm just trying to tell you I'm not looking forward to the end of 2024. <laughs>